Hi everyone and welcome to another GeForce RTX 4060 video. Now today, I'm going to talk about this RTX 4060 Gaming X from MSI as well as the ROG Strix OC from ASUS. Now both of these cards are supposed to be uh, more premium versions of the 4060. Uh, both are supposed to offer more features, uh, better thermals and so on. And both will have a premium price. So let's see how they compare to each other as well as some MSRP models. And let's see if it actually makes sense to spend more money on one of these premium cards or should you just get something more basic instead. Let's go. The Gaming X version of the RTX 4060 isn't an extremely large card. It is just under 25 centimeters long and exactly two slots thick. It has a dual fan design but with two 100 millimeter fans, so it does look a bit more impressive than some of the MSRP cards that I've talked about in my previous video. One of the noticeable differences is that it comes with a metal backplate, while the Gigabyte Wind Force and the Pali Dual use plastic ones instead. Other than that, it doesn't have much in terms of extra features, so there is no dual BIOS or some extra connections on the back, it stops its fans in idle like every other card, and it does come with a little bit of RGB. ASUS, on the other hand, takes their Strix cards to a whole different level. It is a massive 31 centimeter long GPU that is more than three slots thick, and even though its design really stands out from the rest, it also kind of feels like a complete overkill for this 115 watt chip. Its compatibility is a lot worse, obviously, but if you want your system to look like it has a high-end GPU, this will get the job done just fine. It does have blue and red details on the shroud, so that's something to keep in mind, but it also has the most RGB out of all four cards that I have here, so if you're into RGB, this might add some extra value. It is a very solid design though, it has a plastic shroud, a huge heatsink underneath and a metal backplate which makes it weigh just over 1 kilo so it is almost 500 grams heavier than the MSI. Feature wise it does add a dual BIOS switch and two fan headers that will adjust the fan speed based on your GPU temps. Now all cards that I've seen so far require one regular 8 pin power connector but the ROG adds a small LED to the connection that shows whether you plugged in the power cord correctly or not which I would say is a nice quality of life feature and it probably didn't add much cost to the whole product. Both the MSI and the ASUS come with three DisplayPort connections and a single HDMI 2.1 connection on the back, which is, I would say, a typical layout for this chip. And out of the four cards that I've tested, only the WindForce OC from Gigabyte has two DisplayPorts and two HDMI connections instead. Now before we look at these two cards, let's do a quick recap of the 4060 in general, in case you missed my previous video. Now in 30 different games I tested on 1080p, uh, some on high and some on ultra settings, the 4060 gets you 90 FPS or more in most games. There's a few titles that sit below that, but you can use the LSS to keep everything running nicely on a high refresh rate 1080p monitor. If you're going for 1440p, it is generally worth considering a higher tier card, but the 4060 can get the job done. Now most games run fine-ish on higher settings, but with DLSS on, most games will be completely playable. Now there are a few games that will require you to drop the graphics settings a bit lower, uh, but that will happen more and more in the future because more games will start demanding more VRAM and the RTX 4060 only has 8. If you find some older 3000 series cards, you shouldn't write them off because the RTX 3060 Ti, which costs about the same, is actually faster than this RTX 4060. It does use significantly more power, which might change the total cost significantly over time, but it will give you also more performance in that time, and you should kind of decide on what makes more sense to you personally based on how much you gain per day and what you pay for electricity in your region. Compared to the RX 7600 from AMD, the 4060 is about as fast on average, but it does vary quite per game. So if you only play one particular game, you should just check benchmarks for that particular title. The 4060 is a lot more efficient, and for most people, that efficiency will make the 4060 the cheaper option over time, even though it's a bit more expensive to buy it right now. And if you consider other options like DLSS, uh, frame generation, and NVIDIA's encoder support, I would say that the RX 7600 needs to be a lot cheaper than just 10% to be able to make sense. 
I think the RTX 4060 is quite underwhelming overall, and it feels that Nvidia is mostly focusing on features and AI and efficiency, and not enough on the raw performance. And there are a lot of considerations and things to weigh and compare before you decide to actually buy it. But assuming you did decide to go for an RTX 4060, uh, let's see how these two cards compare to each other and to other two MSRP models I talked about in my previous video. In terms of boost speeds, uh, both MSI and ASUS boost a bit higher than the MSRP cards. There is a 4% gap between the fastest and the slowest one, and as usual, none of the cards come with overclocked memory out of the box. But as we've seen in previous 40 series reviews, in actual games, the clock speed differences lead to basically insignificant FPS differences. Now, there is a frame or two here and there, and technically, the ASUS is the fastest of them all, but you would never really notice this while gaming. So, if you want to pay a big price premium to get more gaming performance, uh, spending it on a 4060 Ti instead is the way to go. In terms of power consumption, all cards are very close together, with the ASUS using a couple of watts more than others, but that is still a small enough difference that it really doesn't matter at the end of the day. And if we look at noise, uh, this is where the premium models show their biggest benefit. So the MSI Gaming X is considerably quieter than the Pali Duo as well as the Gigabyte Windforce, and the ASUS ROG card is either a bit quieter in its default performance mode or exceptionally quiet in its quiet profile. In terms of temperatures, the MSI and ASUS look a lot better too. So the MSI ran quieter and cooler already, but the ASUS takes it another step further and shows temperatures you would usually expect to see in a GPU that is running idle. Now, I do think that the temperature gap between the two ASUS profiles is pretty small, so the louder performance profile is only a tiny bit cooler for a significant jump in noise, which makes the quiet profile a more logical option, and I would say this is the way to go. So overall, the more expensive cards do offer better performance. Uh, not so much when it comes to gaming performance, because uh, those differences are irrelevant, but they do run cooler and they do run quieter. And in case of the ASUS ROG card, uh, you get some extra features as well. Still. When it comes to these um, mid-tier chips like the RTX 4060, the deciding factor will always be the price. Now, MSI wasn't able to share their prices in time for this video, but we know that the uh, 4060 Ti Gaming X costs $30 or euros more than the MSRP models, so I kind of expect something similar for this uh, 4060 non-Ti card. The ROG Strix here costs 439 euros in the EU, and even though I don't have the US prices just yet, I assume it will be around $400, which is the same price as the base model 4060 Ti Dual, for example, and the Dual 4060 Ti will be more than 20% faster on average. So at the end of the day, I don't think you need to spend more than the base MSRP set by Nvidia for this RTX 4060, and based on the numbers in this video, the palette card, for example, will be more than a good enough option. I think the 4060 is already quite pricey for what it offers, and it's just really difficult to justify spending even more on a fancier model. I guess if you really need a super quiet system, or you just really like the looks of the MSI, Paying a small price premium is not that horrible, but the ROG here is just way too expensive, in my opinion. For those 100 euros more, I would just go for more performance and get a base model 4060 Ti instead. But it does perform very well objectively, and the price can change in the future. So if you do find this one at a much more reasonable price premium somewhere in the future, it might be worth considering as well. That's it. This video is brought to you by Corsair and their RMX Shift power supplies. These fully modular power supplies are very unique as they come with connections on the side instead of the back, making it easier than ever to add and remove cables as well as cable manage your build. They are extremely reliable and power efficient and due to their low noise fans that stop completely under 50% load, they are also extremely quiet. You get a variety of cables for any system you have in mind, including the 12 volt high power connection, and on top of that, you get a nice 10 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below.
Thank you so much for watching this video and for sticking to the end. I hope it was helpful enough. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure to click that subscribe button down there so you never miss my future uploads. Bye guys and I will see you in the next one.